This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. As the coronavirus continues to ravage economies across the world, automakers are taking drastic action and looking for help. We start in Japan, where Reuters reports that Nissan's management in Japan decided the company needs to be smaller and is going to reduce its annual manufacturing capacity by one million vehicles. You know, when Carlos Ghosn was CEO, he wanted to boost sales to eight million vehicles a year. But with this restructuring plan, Nissan will only have the capacity to make five million, and sales could actually be lower than that since the company was struggling before the virus broke out. In the meantime, Nissan's trying to borrow four and a half billion dollars to get through the pandemic and restructure its operations. Now we move to France where Renault's also looking for a big bag of money. It wants to borrow between four and five billion euros. Like so many other automakers around the world, it cut its dividend and top management took pay cuts. That's usually a signal that management will initiate pay cuts all across the company. Meanwhile, back in the States, car dealers are scrambling to boost online sales, but they're running into problems. Four states, Hawaii, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Kentucky, have banned all car sales during the pandemic. 23 states only allow online sales, while 24 states have allowed dealerships to remain open. Michigan just loosened restrictions to allow for online sales. The Detroit News reports that one Ohio dealership claims it sold 15 cars to people from Michigan because they could not buy one in their own state. Fewer people are driving because of stay-home orders, so insurance companies are offering discounts. Allstate and GEICO previously announced 15% discounts for customers. Farmers in 21st Century are cutting premiums for customers by 25% in April, and Progressive is giving 20% discounts for premiums in April and May. Best of all, this will be done automatically for customers, so no action is required. Chevrolet showed off the refreshed version of the Traverse last month, but due to the pandemic, that's been delayed. Rather than coming out later this year, the new Traverse will now launch next year as a 2022 model. As you can see, the big styling change is the front and rear fascias, which now bring the overall look closer to GM's larger SUVs. Chevrolet says we'll get more details on the new Traverse closer to launch. Last year, Volkswagen redesigned its logo. Amazingly, it's taken a year for the new badge to make it to North America. In the U.S., it just made its debut on the 2020 Atlas Cross Sport. Volkswagen's chief designer, Klaus Bischoff, said he wanted to make the W float, bringing a new lightness to the Volkswagen brand. The new logo simplifies the design elements and color which provides for better resolution when it's displayed on digital devices, like smartwatches and phones. VW now needs to change all the signs at its plants and dealerships and in its advertising. And Hoover thought so much work had to go into two letters. With so many people locked down at home, car makers are now offering color books and design competitions for kids. And now Rolls-Royce is jumping in on the bandwagon. Anyone 16 or younger can design their dream Rolls-Royce of the future. Rolls designers will pick their favorite one, and the winner gets their design turned into a fully rendered illustration by the team, as they did with this crab mobile by Young Thomas. The winner also gets chauffeur-driven in a Rolls-Royce Phantom for their first day back to school and with their best friend. There are several runner-up prizes as well, all you have to do is fill out a short form, and multiple entries are allowed. The number of pedestrians killed in traffic accidents continues to go up. While the auto industry is deploying technology to protect pedestrians, infrastructure can play a role as well. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is calling for bollards, or rubber curbs, to be installed at intersections, which, as this graphic shows, would force drivers to turn more slowly 
by blocking the diagonal path through the crosswalk. Washington, D.C. started installing these at intersections two years ago, and the IIHS found that it reduced the number of times that drivers had to swerve or break suddenly by 70 percent. More than half of all crashes involving pedestrians occur at intersections, so this could be a simple way to cut back on those accidents. Most young athletes dream of being on SportsCenter on television, but for IndyCar driver Sage Karam, it took winning a race in front of a computer screen rather than in a driver's seat. Karam took the top spot in IndyCar's first iRace event and never thought the attention would be so big for a virtual race. Not only did he get on SportsCenter, Karam says he's done four or five interviews a day since the first race. He also was so worn out after that win that he took two days off from sim racing. It really is amazing to see how much attention these virtual races are getting. The first IndyCar race brought in more than 600,000 viewers through online channels. And more big names are jumping on board. The Virtual Legends Trophy will pit drivers who are over 40 years old against each other. And that's going to include names like Emerson Fittipaldi, Juan Pablo Montoya, and IndyCar and F1 champion Jacques Villeneuve. And you can watch those races on Saturday. Could Mazda have a rotary engine back in its lineup again? The automaker teased us with the RX Vision a few years back. Then came word of a possible rotary range extender. And now it looks like that powertrain could make it into the MX-30 crossover. Mazda is gearing up to celebrate its 100th anniversary, and a video celebrating this has an image of an MX-30 that it says has a rotary range extender. Let's hope it doesn't take as long as Mazda's diesel to hit the market, and let's also remember that plug-in hybrids don't sell that well, and rotary engines are expensive to develop. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Detroit used to be known as the arsenal of democracy, and now the U.S. Army wants the automotive industry back to help in the nation's defense. On AutoLine this week, Brigadier General Ross Kuffman talks about the types of auto technology that it's looking to use in the battlefield. So part of my portfolio, we work with robotics, which, uh, you know, the autonomy space is huge. We've got a lot of money from the auto industry going into that. It's a different problem set, right? So you have on-road on autonomy has got very strict rules. We've got lines, all stop signs look the same, stop lights, et cetera. Uh, on the modern day battlefield, it's a little different. Uh, the terrain that you'll face uh, is put there by the enemy to stop you. And so how do you get around that? How do you map that in real time so that we can position forces into a relative place of advantage uh, to defeat our adversary? So there's a lot in there. Um, the, there's several in the automotive industry working towards either hybrid or pure electric. And we're very interested in that so that we can reduce the logistics footprint on the battlefield. So if we don't have to refuel as often, that's less trucks on the road, we can stay in the fight longer. Uh, so there's several areas that I think we overlap, but those are two. And, of course, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, www.autoline.tv, or on our YouTube channel. And with that, we wrap up today's report. In fact, this whole week's worth of reports, and hope to see you back here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.